people of Tibet come from many different backgrounds and it's definitely reflected on the country's cuisine. Portland not only allows you to experience this cuisine, but you can also have it vegan. Just crossing over the St. John's Bridge in Portland, you will come across a food pod with a bright orange truck that offers Tibetan food that you won't want to miss. So I've just arrived at the St. John's Food Cart Pod here in Portland, and I'm about to meet up with Tashi, owner of Little Tibet PDX, to learn about the flavors of Tibetan food and why they decided to offer some vegan options. Portland, Oregon is one of the top vegan cities in the U.S. and the food has never been so diverse. I'm Eunice from Rated V and I've teamed up with Country Life Natural Foods to learn how seven amazing foodpreneurs in Portland, Oregon have transformed simple vegan ingredients into amazing dishes. Let's go. Hi, Tashi. Hi, Eunice. How are you? Good. How are you this morning? Good. I'm super excited to try all your food oh, and peas. Like, I'm, I'm like, super excited I'm ready. too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I guess let's get started. Okay. Nice. So, Tashi, tell me, why did you decide to open up this food truck and why did you decide to offer vegan options? I've been dreaming about it, like opening a restaurant, like since I came here yeah. to the United States. I moved here, like from Santa Fe, then where I work, closed down right. like the Whole Foods in Vancouver oh, it like permanently yeah. closed down so it's a perfect time to open my own food truck or like yeah. whatever yeah I noticed that you have a lot of Tibetan food because your parents are from Tibet yeah. that's your background uh -huh. so why vegan options like there's so many vegan lovers in Portland like it's a like a big like a vegan community yeah. in Portland then like we came up with the traditional to the vegan option. Yeah. For example, like Momo, like Momo is yeah. a traditional Tibetan food. I love that. That's yeah. what you wanted to do, that you wanted to share the Tibetan culture and share with the vegan culture right. because sometimes people are like, oh, this isn't normally vegan, so we're just not going to let you have it. Right. <laughs> or is the vegan food pretty common in Tibet? Can you find no, it? No, like in Tibet, uh, like the people, they used to eat like uh, yak meat, mm -hmm. uh, butter, high fiber things like a barley yeah yeah because it's a high altitude yes yeah, so, yeah it's cold. so like cold <laughs> yeah and now like the weather is changing yeah. like because of the climate change right like uh, and also the uh, influences from the neighboring countries oh. like india yeah. nepal they've been like eating like different kind of foods oh, yeah yeah so that's why i have a uh, indian on my food truck menu oh yeah because yeah, you have that so, influence too. yeah my momos like there's a touch of indian flavor Ooh, I so like, like tibetan with the Indian. Well, yeah, because it's the neighboring yeah. countries, so yeah, that makes so, sense. I love that. Yeah. That's actually my favorite thing about certain foods when they get influence from neighboring countries. So right. it's a, it kind of becomes its own flavor, right? Right. So I think it's great. Yeah. So on that note, let's get started and try this food. Yeah. Okay, so Tashi, right. you brought me a feast. I am beyond excited. Everything here looks amazing. Can you explain a little bit what everything is? So uh, this is uh, vegan momo. Uh -huh. From the day it was a holy month, yeah. like Tibetan holy month, like Buddhist holy month. I mean, we normally uh, don't eat meat. So like we need substitutes. So like we start using the um, Beyond Meat. During the Tibetan holy month, that's it's normal for people not to eat meat during right, that month. Right, the whole month. Oh, okay, yeah. look at that. Like so some people you... like they uh, stop eating meat until the full moon, yeah. like the 15th of the month. Uh -huh. Like, but like some people, they stop eating. Just stop like, eating. Yeah. Okay, so it is a tradition for yeah. people to kind of abstain eating meat for a while. So right. people look for different options or right. create different vegan right. options. Okay, and so then we have two different kinds of momos. We have the steamed and we have and the steamed fried. and the fried. Yeah. yeah, but the ingredients are same. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, we use like beyond meat, cabbage, potato, mm -hmm. uh, carrots, uh, onions, cilantro, uh, scallions, and uh, garlic. I heard that momos aren't typically eaten every day. They're usually a special occasion. Food, yeah, right? like uh, in in like India, Nepal, and the uh, Tibet, like it's. Uh, it's a festival, festival food. food. Yeah. I'm going to try You know what? I'm going to try a fried momo because sure. I've never actually tried a fried momo before. I've always had them steamed. And then I'm going to dip it yep. into this yep. spicy sauce. <sighs> Guys, this is crisp to perfection. You can actually see it. How's the texture? No one. The flavor is amazing. I have sauce on my face because I'm enjoying it really a lot. <laughs> That spicy sauce is perfect. This 
dish right here. I've had it before. Tell me a bit about this chow mein. So chow mein, we eat like occasionally, like we don't eat like every day. Yeah. We need like a really hot, hot wok. wok. Yeah, to make this really chow mein. Yeah, because I saw right? I saw you in action back yeah. there and it looked, I was like, oh, that's a serious yeah, chow Yeah, that's the uh, <laughs> main um, secret. Yeah, it's the cook behind the chow mein that makes it good. Yeah. Just so you guys know. These, these noodles, the color, it's like, it's like a perfect char. The texture of the noodles is perfect. The flavor literally sticks to every noodle. That is my favorite thing. Like, oh, it's so good. Like, so you're gonna get flavor in every single bite. Single bite the yeah. perfect, like, cooked noodles. Like, I'll I don't know. It's just delicious. And I love it. So well done on that as well. Thank you. And yes, guys, there's tofu in here. So you get your little protein in here too. Mm. Okay, and then we have these buns. Steam buns. Steam buns that are traditional in Tibet and yeah, are traditionally like, vegan. Yeah, steam buns like uh, we eat with like different uh, curry or... Or spicy sauce, uh, right? You're yeah, saying. spicy sauce. I'm gonna try it with some chili oil because that's how you eat it, right? Yeah, chili sauce. Everything with chili sauce, you guys. Everything. <laughs> the layering on this is beautiful and I love the yeah. yellow. <laughs> With turmeric, the white, um, yeah. so you can see all the pretty colors, and then the curries. And then curries are like a, it's like a same like an Indian curry, yeah. but like we made it with the tofu, yeah. so it's like stays like vegan. I like how you've adapted, like you mentioned earlier, you're adapting the traditional dishes, but making them vegan and just substituting right. the protein, uh -huh. so that people can still enjoy the flavors. They just don't have to eat the yeah. meat. Mint. Yes. There's Ooh, a mint there's in mint it. in there too. Yeah. Even though I mean it's spicy, right? Yeah. It's super spicy because Tibetan food is spicy. Yeah, we like we eat lots of spice. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. if you like spicy food, you will love all of this. Yep. Okay. Spicy tofu curry. Same sauce or different? Different. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not as spicy, but it's still really good. So last but not least, we're gonna try the vegan curry, right? Yeah. Mm. You can taste like the Indian influence in the spices. Yeah. That is so good, so comforting. If you love curry bowls and rice bowls, spicy bowls. You're gonna love yeah. this spicy bowls. So Taji, what is it that you want customers to experience when they eat your food? I want them to taste like a, the real like a Tibetan flavor, like a Tibetan food with influence with the uh, neighboring countries yeah. like flavor. Yeah. So yeah, and then I want them to be happy. Yeah, of yeah. course. I'm happy. So yeah. thank you so much so, for allowing me to try this. And yeah. if you're in Portland, Tibetan food, holiday food, come try it here at Little Tibet. So as you can see, spices and seasonings is what really sets Tibetan food apart. And if you want to add some spice to your life and check out some vegan recipes, you can hop over to countrylifefood.recipes and try them out for yourself at home. Catch you next time on Rated Beef.